Good morning. Uh, we're going to harness up the team and go get some firewood in. We're going to get some firewood for us and for the neighbor. So uh, we're going to do a educational video to teach you how to harness up a horse and hitch him to a wagon. We've got great parts here. So we've got the collar here. You can see there's a the top side has a clasp on it. So we take the clasp, clasp is loose. Now we're gonna put it over his head. And then we'll pull his clasp at the top. Some some collars have a buckle. Uh, this one doesn't buckle it just has a and yet, he's got his bridle. Uh, there's a piece here. This is called throat latch. It'll go underneath here. Yeah. This is called the overcheek. Uh, we'll take him up here for for now and tie him. Man. Easier. These are called the hames, these metal pieces. It's easier if you hold them in the middle or, or towards the, the bottom of it. You have all of it on your shoulder and then you just work it on over. And then uh, Eric, my uh, videographer, if you want to come over on this side. <laughs> uh, buckles are all on this side. So, see see this groove? The lighting may not be good here, but there's a groove in the uh, collar. And then this is called the hame. So this metal piece, there's two of them on either side. And then this buckle here, at the bottom of the hames, needs to be pretty, pretty fairly tight. You wanna pretty much get it almost as tight as you can get it. And then, There's this piece, and it clips in like this. And then we've got a girth here. Now, with a saddle, you would make the girth tight, but with this harness, it doesn't need to be tight. Uh, and then these are called quarter straps, and we'll buckle them at the bottom here. And then this piece here is called the griffin. And we make sure to put the tail over top of that griffin. So we've got great heart harness. And now we're gonna get stand fast. Got us at 5.30 this morning and gave them their breakfast. <laughs> and then I then had my time with, with Jesus, quiet time. So they ate breakfast and uh, they're ready to go to work now. Cool. So these are the team lines. I'm gonna take them out so you can see. So. You see how there's two lines here, and you see how one is a little bit longer than the other? Mm. The stainless steel one is long, snap, hangs down farther than the brass one does. So your longest line always goes on the inside of your team, and the shorter one will go through the ring to the outside of the bit. This part can be a little bit confusing when you're starting out, but 
So this one goes, the shorter line in the Y there goes to the outside bit here. And then, Eric, you want to come over here where you can okay. see better. Back. Back. So again, this, this line that's longer will go through the ring on the hang there. And then it'll come to Great Heart's bit. And I have the lines done up on Great Heart. So spread those out. And then again, this shorter line goes to the outside of Great Heart's bit. And then this longer line goes from his harness over to the bit here. So they cross like that. Uh, now, we will go and we will buckle our lines back here. So now when we pull on the right rein, when we're pulling on this right line here, it'll pull on the outside of the right side of his of Standfast's mouth, and then because of the line crossing over there, it will pull on the right side of Greatheart's mouth. Mm. So they're both gonna feel the same thing on the right side of their mouth when I pull. So now we're gonna turn right, and we're gonna go to the wagon and hook them up. safety measure. Take your lines and wrap them around like this. That way if they were to spook or they move off, they move forward, you can grab the line and pull and say, whoa. Uh, and then for safety reasons, we always hook up the neck yoke first. Thing. This is always the first thing we'll hook up, and the yoke is what is one thing that allows steering of the wagon. So many people today don't know. When you say the word yoke, they might not know what you mean. What well, what is that? Well, this is a kind of yoke, and then oxen will wear a yoke also. But it it reminds us something that Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter eleven, and verse twenty-eight. Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So if we just would harness one of the horses to this wagon, full of firewood, they would not be able to pull it up the hill. So they need a yoke, and they need that yoke to help them to stay together. And so we are in this world carrying a load of, we have a weight, in a burden that we carry in this world. And many people are not yoked up with Jesus, so they're trying to pull the load all by themselves. But you'll find that when you yoke up with Jesus, 
that your burden becomes easy and your yoke is light and you find that when you get too weak and you can't go on anymore in life you'll find that he pulls the load you'll find out that he pulls 90 percent of the load <laughs> and your your life will never be the same and i invite you that if you're not yoked up with jesus today i invite you to go go to your father in heaven and say father in heaven i've been trying to pull the the load of life all by myself yoke me up with your son jesus because i can't do it by myself any longer and then you'll find that jesus comes alongside you and he'll help you pull your load and when you're so tired that you can't pull anything he'll pull the whole load but you'll find that in yoking up to jesus can't he can't just go 50 feet over here without standing fast they have to work together so once you woke yoke up with jesus you have to be willing to go in whatever direction that Jesus sees is best for you to pull your boat. All right. So, Matthew chapter 11, 28 through 30. We can learn so much from just looking at this yoke here before we go to get fire. All right, so the next step, we have the neck, we have the neck yoke fastened. Uh, these are called the tugs, or some people call them traces. So for safety reasons, we start with the, the chain that's closest to the tongue. We hook that up, and then we go to the outside one. Hook that aside, and then it's not a good idea for safety reasons to climb through there because if they were to spook and they were to move, you could get caught and you know injured. So hook up one side and then go around to the other side. And then we do the same thing. We hook our inside chain first. Then we hook our outside chain. And I'm going to check and see. I want to make sure that we've got all our machetes and chainsaws in front of us. We're going to go out and load up some firewood. Pine is not very easy to split. And it splits better typically to slab off from the side rather than going directly through the middle. At least get some slabs off. And then Probably I can get it through the middle there. Keep on missing the bullseye there. There we go. Now, if you see a knot like that, if I try to slab it off right there, it'll be almost impossible. So, the best approach with this one would probably be about right through here to start off. There we go.
Now we have a small knot right there. So if we go across here, uh, might be best at this point to try to make our approach going right through the middle. So we're scoring it, we got here. The next plan of attack will be to hit right here. And I'll just try to keep in that same spot. Missed a little bit. There we go. You want to try it, Eric? And I'll yeah, I'll take a video. Try to keep it in that same. There line. you go. Yeah. That's way off. Nice. Yep. So when it's that thick, you kind of do want to go on the side first. Yeah. Nice. Good job, Eric. Okay. Good. Um. Would this be too harsh to try to? I would try to slab off a piece, uh, this side. like right, right, okay. right through there would probably be the easiest approach. I'm going a little too, too sliver. A little thin. In more on yeah. like that. Yeah. This is oh, I was way off. This is good practice. Yeah, it'll teach you good to aim. begin with there you go so at this point ooh, so close <laughs> almost one more issue What am I doing wrong? Just not hitting it hard enough? Or I just open it up? Well, when you miss there, so <clears throat> it. then you have a little sliver in there that's kind of acting like a spring that's Whew, absorbing. my heart racing. Yeah. Maybe I need to hit it more on the edge. Tell me when you want to break and I'll finish it off. Well, once I get this, you could turn, flip it over and see if it's easier to split it from the other side. Maybe once I, I feel like I'm determined now uh -huh. to get this side. And, the, and there's something you said about when you're going, you want to make sure you don't swing toward your feet, of course. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it to go into the ground either, huh? Well, the splitting maul, it's okay if it goes in the ground. Okay. It, now, with an axe, you don't do so much splitting with an axe. Like you're trimming branches and stuff with the axe or cutting wood with the axe. The axe is the one you want to always keep it out of the dirt and not hit the ground. Oh, piece of kindling. No gym needed here. This is nature's gym. This is the gym. <laughs> that was a good split. Yeah, you're starting to open it up. The key is to hit it at the same, score it and then hit it in that same line. That's the trick that I'm having trouble with. You want to take a go at it? Yeah, I guess. All right, Michael's taking a swing. He's a little bit camera shy, so we don't have him in. We don't have his face in it.
don't don't worry about carrying that over we'll bring the wagon over here and you don't have to carry it all of the way over be closer about how the piece slammed off there. Want me to take a turn? Sure. He'll knock it out in like three hits, watch. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> Maybe if I stand up on top of here. <laughs> Sometimes if you stand up on top sure. of something, you got a little more momentum. I'm gonna try the approach of just going through the middle of it. Three hits. <laughs> Pretty amazing. With anything, it takes practice. Yep. Yeah. Growing up, we never had electric heat. We always heated with wood since I was eight years old. Well, when I was five years old, we heated with wood. Then we lived in the city for three years. And we had electric heat then. But, uh, when I was eight years old, we moved here to Kentucky, and we always had wood heat. This is harder. You can hear it, you can tell. It's dense. He's pretty precise with his aim. Ah, I missed there. I hope you <laughs> Stove, and it's time to shed a layer. 